All right, Frank, uh, thank you for your time today. Basically, uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be doing the next session uh, training call. So we've launched your website. Uh, I'm very happy with uh, the way your website looks. We have all the members in there. We pointed your domain and we can really start focusing on what the next best steps should be to have a successful website. Sounds great. So what we want to focus on on this particular call is introducing you some really helpful third party tools that will help generate more leads to teach you how to market the content and also creating that quality content. Okay. The first part of our presentation is focusing on adding content. So adding quality content is key to driving traffic to your site and more importantly, converting visitors to leads. You're, so, you're talking about like blog posts and stuff like that? You got it. Blog posts, precisely. Okay. Precisely. So, Which is something I never really envisioned doing for this site, but I, I'm learning that it has to be done. It's, it, well, it's, the beautiful thing is you don't need to create an endless supply of blog articles. If you were to create three or four really captivating pieces of articles uh, with information that helps resolve issues for your customers, which are your website members, you can leverage those three or four articles. With my, with my directory, I have probably a total of 40 articles, but I only use three for Facebook advertising, for example, because those articles really lead to conversions. People click on them, they read them, they land on my landing page, and then they fill out the form. So we'll, we'll go over all that in detail uh, during this presentation. Okay, so it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be an ever going process. Uh, and then of course, if you have time, you'll continue to write them, but it's not necessary. Okay. And we also have the feature content. Uh, so when we're talking about feature content, we're talking about uh, coupons and videos and, and articles and right. classifieds. And then, of course, the business listings themselves. So what is the point of spending money on traffic if it does not lead to conversions? So one of the biggest mistakes we see with people launching their websites is they say, I'm live. My website works. I can perform a search. People can find members and they can find businesses. I'm going to start investing money on driving traffic to my website. People who do this without following these steps oftentimes burn through that money. And they say, what, what went wrong? I see that there's a 50% bounce rate on my homepage. Or I see that we've gotten 25 clicks, but we haven't had anybody sign up as a member. This is what we want to avoid with this presentation, uh, is to make sure that when you do spend money on marketing, and that's vital that it goes well in the first attempt because we realize how expensive that is, that you're able to collect those valuable emails, those leads. So that's the whole purpose of this, of this presentation. So the first, thing, the first thing to do is to blog. So, right. so here are some tips. And after this presentation, I'll send you a PDF of this so you don't need to take any notes, Frank. Oh, that's great. So what are the, what are the best topics to, to, to write about as a blog writer is... What are you an expert on that your members would find valuable? What problems are you helping solve for your members? And then using the Brilliant Directory's admin blog feature, so your official blog's not mixed in with your member blog post. So I'll go, I'll go a little slower on all three of those. So basically, there's two blog features with the Brilliant Directory's platform. You have the admin blog, which is just for you to use as the administrator of the website. This is your go-to place as the expert blog and it's tailor. Uh, more so to your customers than to the website visitors. Right. And then you have the member blog, which is your members are able to go in there and contribute to a unified blog, and they can write tips for their customers, which are your website visitors. Well, wait, I, I don't understand that number. In other words, if they're blogging, that blog is just seen on their page? So there's, you're going to, you can... You can choose to launch that now or later. My recommendation is the member blog should be the uh, one that you launch at a later time. I would not launch that now okay. because as we'll cover later on in this presentation, uh, launching a feature and having it be empty is detrimental to the credibility of your website. So if we had a right. website section called member blogs, since you're actually relying on your members to write those blogs, as you're starting right. out, it's going to be empty for a long time. Later on in phase two or phase three of your business, that's a great feature to launch once you have an active membership base. And then but you have it. Go ahead. What I, don't, what I don't understand is let's say I have 10 members blogging. Those blogs from each of those 10 members are all going to show up in one place? Correct. Or just, or, 
Okay. It'll also and it'll also show up on their profile page for. Oh, that's, if, if that's I, what I'm yeah, trying to figure out. Right. Yeah. If I'm member X, then my blog article that I wrote will be on my profile page, but it will also be on slash member articles, for Great. example. And then your blog is going to be slash blog. Can they choose whether or not they want to be in both locations? Like, what if they don't want to be in the general blog? They're not going to be able able to do that. Your slash blog is your holy place, meaning that this is where all your marketing is going to go to go into. You're going to want to make sure that a member can't hijack that with poor content. Right, but what I'm saying is if a member is posting on his blog, what if he doesn't want other members to see it? He's not going to have mainly, any, he's mainly not gonna, for his customers. He's not going to have any say in that. The advantage of having a blog that's shared with everybody is that it's going to help them exp get more exposure. Okay. So by having your article show up on the members or, uh, article section of your website, you'll have more people finding your profile. Okay. So for your official blog, right, you need to decide what are you an expert on that your members would find valuable and what problems are you helping solve for them. Oftentimes, the most common topics that your members would love to read is tips on how they can make more money. How can right. how, some good, some gr five free ways to advertise your business, um, 10 excellent websites to do this or, or five hacks to do that right. um, and tailor made to their specific niche. Uh, so if it's a local directory, perhaps uh, five of the great, the best, the cheapest newspapers to advertise in. If it's a niche directory, maybe like a plumber's directory or a tutor's directory, it could be um, uh, 10 ways to promote, uh, the 10 best websites to promote your tutoring services. Gotcha. So it's, it's articles that they will actually find value. You as the directory owner are now the expert and you need to come across as the expert of the industry. Okay. All right. And then also in the tip section here, you can see that we can brainstorm questions your potential members might have about how to leverage their listing on your website. Those are all blog topics as well. How do I leverage? I now have a listing on your website. How do I leverage that listing? So you can have an article on they should promote special offers and then they can take the link to their coupon and post it on their Facebook page to help promote their listing on your site to help drive more traffic. Yeah, that makes good sense. I don't honestly, I, I, I don't do anything on Facebook. I know that's like sacrilegious to say, but it's the truth. I, I'm, I don't even have a Facebook page for the directory yet, but I'm, that's next on my list. That's awesome. And, and once I show you the lead-in form, which is what I'm most excited to show you, I think you'll be motivated to write a couple articles and to, and to at least get your feet wet in that, in that type of marketing because you can, it leads to a lot of conversions. Oh, as a matter of fact, I see I do have a Facebook fan page. I set it up already. I just haven't put anything on it. <laughs> I'm so, so busy trying to get it launched. So, so adding quality content throughout your website adds credibility, which turns into which ter in turn leads to more website conversions. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes we see, and I know with your website you haven't done this, so that's fantastic, is we'll see people creating a ton of features, and each of those features is kind of empty. You need to make sure if you have deals, if you have, I'm sorry, if you have deals, if you have article section, if you have a, an event section, that there's a lot of content on your website for each one of those features because having a streaming widget on your homepage with only two posts actually is detrimental to the reputation sure. of your website. It's hard to get a business owner to want to invest in signing up when they see that you have empty sections on your website. Right. All right, let's continue. Nurture leads. So getting visitors to your website is half the battle. Once they land on your website, you need to convert. So we need to capture their attention that's the quality content we were talking about. And here's the most important piece. You need to offer something of value in exchange for their email. So we'll, we'll go over that later on. Okay. So, so we need to understand the buyer's journey before we even delve into this topic. There's three different stages for every person that's going to buy. There's the awareness stage, there's the consideration stage and there's the decision stage. One of the biggest mistakes we see is that people assume that 
once they hear about your website, let's say an email campaign and let them know that you exist, that they think that they're going to sign up and buy the product right there on the first, first time seeing your website. The reality is they're just in their awareness stage. They haven't even heard about your business. They don't know that you exist. They don't know what you're about. And people are very hesitant nowadays to go from the awareness stage to the, to the buying. There's two additional stages before they even come to make that decision that you need to address. So what's important is developing a strategy that allows you to get somebody that's in the awareness stage to give you the email. That's what you need when you're starting out with an online business. You need that email so that you right. can nurture them, so that you can explain the benefits of being a member on your site, so that you can send them tips on marketing their business, so that you can build a real relationship with this potential consumer. Once they're aware of your brand, and then at that point, you have a real opportunity to get them to sign up on your website. So we're going to be addressing that awareness stage, which is the very first stage of the buyer's journey. So they've never heard of you and expecting a stranger to sign up on your website on the first visit is an uphill battle. It's possible. It's possible, but it's, it's, it's difficult. So the key, the key is nurturing your leads. Once you capture an email, it's up to you to demonstrate you are an industry expert and investing in a listing on your website will lead to more sales. So basically, the, the exchange is, I will pay to be on your website, but that is a business investment that I'm making. By making this investment, I believe that I'm going to be making more sales and acquiring more business in exchange. So it's a matter of explaining that to potential members on your website that by doing this, by signing up, you're in fact going to be making more money. That's hard to do from the awareness stage because it's so much information. You've got to basically build that trust before you get to the nitty gritty of the actual pitch to the product. Got it. So understanding the pain points of your members is the best opportunity that you have. So what pain point do your members have? I'll give you a, a couple of examples. A lot of people have trouble marketing their websites. Um, you can even go into uh, the Brilliant Directory's blog area and see all of our call to action. So we have the marketing guide, we offer a free trial, uh, but the marketing guide in particular is one of the primary resources we use to generate leads. We now have a webinar that we recorded that's also used for generating leads. And people need to give us their, their email and in exchange they'll get access to this one hour webinar that teaches them how to promote their business. So whatever pain points your members have, if you can create a resource that helps them tackle those pain points and offer that resource in exchange for an email, you're going to be on, uh, you're going to be on the right path to really generating a lot of real leads for your website. So this brings me to the lead-in pop-up form. This is a HubSpot product. It's 100% free. And it's absolutely phenomenal. I cannot promote it enough. And basically, you go into leadin.hubspot.com, uh, and I'll send you the link to that afterwards. Okay. And then basically, it allows you to easily build this form. It's so easy to build it. It takes moments. And then you're able to easily add an, an, an image, and then what, it, you have a redirect URL. So basically, whatever this pain point issue that you're going to be addressing, you're able to then create a pop-up form on your website. And you can link this to your Aweber or to your MailChimp account. So all the emails you collect instantly go into that funnel. And then once that happens, uh, and they go ahead and they fill in that form, they want to download the brochure, they want to sign up for the webinar, they want whatever that product is. This is the, the most important thing that you'll have to come up with. If it's good and if it's quality, they're going to give you the email in exchange for getting that. Um, and, then, and, then, and then that'll go into your sales funnel and you can officially start nurturing that lead. Um, what's nice with these pop -up, this pop-up form is that you can have it show up when they scroll 50% down the page or instantly or have it go up, show up in the center or on the bottom right or the top left. So you have full control over where that shows. And more importantly is you, you can control what pages it shows up on. 
because you wouldn't want this on your homepage because a website visitor doesn't want to download your brochure on how to promote their business. They're right. looking for a business. So it could be an exit pop-up? You got it. So what it can be is you can say, I want this on my landing pages. I want this on my blog articles and I want this on my pricing pages. So you can say, I only want this pop-up on those pages because I know the people on those pages are the people thinking about signing up. What about, is, is that a good place to offer them a dollars off coupon? That, well, now you're jumping from the awareness stage to the buying stage. They're not uh, ready for that. Okay. So basically, writing good content, right? I'll give you right. a, 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 a one, one story uh, with a customer. She had a tutor website. And she said, I don't know what articles to write. And I told her, you need to write, by, you need to write articles that would engage a tutor, right? So they're on their Facebook page. And if I'm a woman that's 26 and I see an article that says 10 signs that your student is a potential stalker, that's a fun and light article that that tutor will click on. <laughs> they will <laughs> click on that. And on okay. Facebook, you're able to target a specific gender, a specific demographic, and a specific location. So you can only spend your marketing dollars towards women that are living in a specific area. Now that they clicked on your article, because that, that is a super engaging article with incredible conversion rates, they're going to read the article and they're going to have this pop-up show up. And that pop-up is going to be something, they don't even know what website they're on. They don't care. They don't, know who you, they don't know who you are. They just like this article that they're reading. This pop-up shows up and it says 10 ways to, to increase your, the amount of students that you have as a tutor. I know I'm, it's not necessarily the right wording, but, yeah, I know what you mean. but then they're like, wow, that's awesome. A, a resource for me. That's something I want. I want to download that. And then they give you the email and then they get this great brochure, this great article, this great resource. That's truly how you convert leads. Right. If I could just interject, I have a, one of my clients, I created a catering software product for him. Uh -huh. And on his sales page, we did this and we, let them sign up for a 10 part email series on how to grow your catering business. That, and it's like, people love it. Yeah. You know? That's exactly it. You got it. So you already know the, the, the philosophy and how effective that is. So using this lead and pop-up form and, and linking it to Aweber or to, or to MailChimp or third party system really allows you to really manage those leads. Also what I, another thing you can do with this is, you know, there's a lot of, Writing a lot of this stuff yourself is hard. There's a lot of great PLR things that you could buy that are, you know, little ebooks on how to build your, your own email list, how to do this, how to do that. And, you know, you spend seven bucks and so you can, you know, use it for lead generation. Absolutely. Recycling, not, not reinventing the wheel is definitely, right. <laughs> definitely the way to go. Right. But most of these people have never seen what you're going to offer them, you know, because mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't move in that circle. Exactly, exactly. You're, you're, you're helping um, a local business owner, small business owner promote their business. And that's the one topic everybody's interested in. Right. Is promoting their business. So as, and then once you build that relationship and you're giving them good tips, the next, ne next time you send them an email and I explain to them how signing up on your directory, it will lead to more business and you explain that to them, then there's the trust you're already an industry in expert and the conversion rate is dramatically increased from just flat out sending them an email saying, sign up for my website that you've never heard of. It's a little abrupt. It's a little direct. And oftentimes the results aren't quite what people are hoping they'll be. Well, you know, my experience is business owners are quite busy. They're, they don't really care about you beating around the bush. They want you to just get to the point and they can handle harsh. And you know what I mean? They, they handle it well. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can, and of course, the email list is a big deal. If you have a great quality email list, that's kind of a, an exception to the rule. If you have a, a real quality email list, but if you're going to be spending money on marketing and driving traffic to your site, uh, the nurturing uh, way is definitely the way to go. All right. All right. And then the next, and then the other side of it, and now what, all we've talked about is content for the members of your website, the business listings. The other side of your business is the content for your website visitors. Right. Right. We need to make sure that they want to come back to your website. So, mm -hmm. so getting a visitor to come to your website and, and, and delivering an experience that is fun and they found it helpful and interactive will increase the chances that they come back. And we're going to talk about how you can make it an interactive experience with, with this platform. 
So what do visitors like? <laughs> they like deals, they like events, they like fun and helpful articles, they like being a part of a community, and sometimes they like having access to member-only content, depending on the industry. So our recommendation is to start out with one thing that you think your members would like and to actually, that your website visitors would like and actually spend time creating that content. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the member-only content. Um, but, but before we go to that, just want to reiterate, there's no point in activating all the features and having them be empty. You want to just do one at a time. Sure. So here we go. Creating a useful and interactive experience for website visitors is key to having return visits. So what are some things that make it interactive for a website visitor? You can have them create a profile on your website as a general user, not a business listing. You can allow them to be able to pin items to their personal boards. So if you're familiar with Pinterest, uh, for example, my wife loves to uh, look for recipes. And when she sees a recipe she likes, she pins it to her board. Right. The fact that she can pin it to her board is what makes it fun for her. She can spend hours on there just pinning stuff, even though she may never look at it again. And never having to search for it and, again. But, never, but that's the key. That's why she'll come back to it. It's because she's sure. not going to, when she found a recipe she liked or a party decor, decor that she liked, she knows that she can go back, log in, and see all of her, all of her pins. Right. So, so basically, that's what the Brilliant Directory's favorite features does. We call it the favorite features, but really it's the ability to pin something. Uh, by default, currently it's a heart icon. So when somebody creates a coupon or a business listing, there's a little heart icon. So when you click on that icon, it says you need to create a listing, a profile to be able to favorite things, which people expect, of course, because it's like Pinterest, it's like Facebook, it's like Twitter. To interact with the platform, you need to just create a, a, a profile. Right. So our software actually makes it possible to have two different contact details pages and to fully customize the general user profile experience. So you can hide the, the ability to create a, uh, to select a, a category. You can hide the listing details form, the about form, the profile photo upload, and you could just have it be bare bones, where it's just their name, their email. You can ask for their phone number if you like. But basically, once they create their, their profile, that's the general user profile, this is now another marketing list that you have. This is a very powerful tool that you have because this email list that you have are things that your members would love to advertise to. They'd love in a newsletter, hey, I'll advertise your product in our newsletter that we send out to the users of our software. And that's, yeah. the, favorite, and that's the favorites tool. That's what takes your website from being just information to an actual interactive platform that generates even more leads that your members are going to die to get their hands on. Yeah, that sounds great. And that's out of the box. So that's, that's all functionality that you already have because you launched the, the bootstrap theme. Uh, you may just need a little bit of assistance, and I'm happy to, to help you out after this call and, and, and just making sure that the general user level is set up properly. But the fact that you can designate two different contact forms, one for your members that are businesses and one for the ones that are your general users, means that they have a completely distinct experience. And of course, you don't want these general users to be found in search results, and you can control that for the membership level. So you'd say not indexed by Google, not found in search results, so their privacy is, is taken into consideration. Great. All right. Uh, basically, uh, this is, I know it's a lot of information. Um, we do have this uh, Discover 8 Easy Ways to Maximize Membership Signups. It's an hour-long webinar that we've split up into different sections. And at the end of that webinar, it's an hour and six-minute Q&A with uh, different customers that are using the Brilliant Directory software. So that's another great resource that you have available to you after this. But my recommendation would be to sign up for Lead In to integrate it with either your eWeber or MailChimp account, install that on your website, and to create three or four quality pieces of content that you can then use for social media marketing. And then of course, the, the most important piece to this puzzle is deciding what is that one item that you're offering people in exchange for their email. Mm -hmm. And once, if, whether that's PDF or it's a video, whatever that is, whatever that format is, uh, you've got to create that piece of content and then you're and then or you said repurpose someone else's piece of content, which is a great idea that you can fast track this for now. And then once you have that, 
uh, at that point you can then really turn on the marketing uh, machine on your end because all the traffic that you're going to your site you're going to be generating a lot more leads thanks to that specific strategy yeah that may lot but uh, you know but getting back to the dollars off I uh, we're, we haven't reached that point yet right no we're not at the you're talking about sending a special offer yeah no but not in, only in a way because what I was getting to like let's say let's say I'm going to send somebody an email on how how video can help your business mm -hmm. okay and it's an inf it's an informational message however at the end of it i always make sure to tell them by the way if you're interested in the video we have a special offer <laughs> you know sign up through this link and our 195 dollar explainer video you can get 50 dollars off that way i'm killing two birds with one stone yeah i'm, I'm not trying to sell them the directory but I'm still trying to sell them something through the email. You can do it through the email or the landing page, right? The email could be, what I would do in the email is I would make it the video, right? Eight ways to do this. So when they right. click on it and they go to the landing page that has this video embedded on your website, right. below or on the sidebar or above, you can say, you know, I have a little nice introductory paragraph. Uh, th thank you for, 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 for watching this video. As a thank you gesture, we want to offer you a, a $200 coupon. Or a discount. Yeah, that's, good. that's good. Yeah. But I would put that in the, because the email, the more organic and helpful it can be and less, because uh, that's, that's also a bit, uh, spammy. It might, it's a little spammy to sell inside yeah. your email. It's just, sure. you know, just get to know me a little. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. Yeah, after they watch the video and it was quality and they're thankful and you have a special offer, now they're much more enticed to listen or to click on that link. Right. 